Hello again. So today we actually have a fun one. We're going to be talking about the beginner's guide to gold investing. Um, you know, one ounce gold coin right now is about twelve hundred and seventy-six dollars, and you can you know obviously buy those for an investment. But why would you? Why would you buy gold over something like a real estate investment or even um, you know investing just in the stock market? Stay tuned. I'm going to kind of go ahead and show you a couple of examples about gold and why people invest in it, why they don't, and uh, we'll even talk about Warren Buffett a little bit. So stay tuned, and we're going to dive into it. All right, so one of the reasons you buy gold is basically to hedge your money. So for example, let's say you go out and buy five gold coins, five one ounce coins. If you go ahead and do that, let's say that's $6,000. Um, let's say you're investing in the stock market, the economy is really doing well, the US dollar is doing really well, and uh, all of a sudden the market just tanks on you. And usually with gold, what happens is when the market tanks and when the dollar you know drops, um, gold actually will go up in value. So basically it's kind of almost a hedge. If you know like a pendulum, um, when this side's down, gold goes up. And it's not always the sense like that, but it does seem like it does that a lot and I think you know obviously a lot of people will agree with me so it's more of a hedge that you know if you actually um, buy a lot of stocks and you do other investments gold will kind of even it out in the bad times um, and it'll actually usually go up when the economy gets worse because people more tend to buy it because they're afraid of the economy so basically that's one reason and it's probably the main reason people buy gold is to kind of hedge their money um, and that's one of the you know a lot of the big rich people do the same thing they, they buy a lot of investments a lot of real estate but then they have that gold tucked away just in case something hits the fan later in life also, if you guys do hear a little bit of background noise, there's a big storm going on right now, so you guys may hear some thunder or some rain, so just keep that in mind when you're listening. All right, so gold in general, there's if, if you were to take all the gold that's basically been dug up in the world, it wouldn't even fill four Olympic-sized swimming pools. So that puts it in perspective how much gold there's out there. There's, there's not a ton. I mean, obviously, Olympic-sized swimming pool is huge, but um, in the entire world and all the people that have gold jewelry, gold, gold bracelets, gold everything, it can only fill uh, just short of four Olympic-sized swimming pools. So right there, it tells you that there's some value to it. Gold is going to be used for, again, jewelry, electronics, medical, various things like that. And that's where it gets some of its value from. And then the other value, again, is going to be more interesting. It's going to be basically things that go back a long time in history. Um, people just like gold because it's obviously uh, limited. Like I said, it doesn't fill up too many swimming pools. So there's a reason why people like it that for that reason as well. But should you invest in it? All right, so gold really holds its value, which what does that mean? So basically back in, let's, I'm making these numbers up, but back in, nine, in the 1900s, let's say, nine, 1901 or something, let's say you wanted to get a wagon or some kind of thing to pull, you know, your horse would pull. Well, basically a gold coin might have been worth like $20 back then, you know, one full ounce of gold could be worth $20 back in 1900. Well, that $20 though could have bought a whole cart that your horse could have pulled. Um, nowadays, if you want to go ahead and pull something on your car, let's say like a trailer or something like that, you know, it might cost you 12 to 1500 bucks, which is basically the cost of gold now. So over that time that gold's held its value. So that's the one reason why you buy gold is because it does hold its value over time. Whether it's a good investment we'll get into, but that's one of the reasons why you, you kind of hold on to gold. And also gold's not going to be as volatile as like the stock market. Uh, obviously you can make a ton of money with stocks. Um, with gold, and I'll go through some charts here in a second, it started, you know, it, it, you know, you, you definitely can make money over time and I'll show you why, but it's not going to be to the same extent that you would with stocks and other things like that. Of course, the risk is a lot less. I mean, again, if something hits the fan and you have to get out of the house quickly and you have to run away and you have some gold, um, you can go anywhere in the world with gold and they'll accept it. Obviously, you probably can't get to security at the airport, but they'll, <laughs> but they'll stop you if you have too much. But anyways, you get my point. Um, gold will be accepted anywhere. Um, other things won't. I mean, money could lose all its value, but still gold will be accepted. So that's one reason people buy gold as well. All right, one of the things too with gold, and, and one of the reasons you may not want to invest in gold, and this was done, this was said by Warren Buffett, and it's it's basically pretty obvious though. If you actually buy, let's say you buy ten thousand dollars in gold, or let's just say fifty thousand dollars in, well, let's make it even bigger. Let's say a hundred thousand dollars in gold. Um, you have that money, and it could it could go up slightly. I mean, over time it might go up, you know, thirty, forty, fifty percent. Could go up a hundred percent. But how many years does it take to get there? That's that's what you have to ask yourself. Now go out and buy some real estate, right? Um, let's say you go ahead and buy some real estate, and you put your first initial $100,000 on in an apartment or something like that. Well, now you own the real estate and that value is going to stay there pretty, you know, pretty stagnant. Um, I don't know if you guys hear the uh, the lightning behind me or the thunder, but I'm sorry about that. So anyways, long story short, if you buy a uh, real estate, you actually can then rent that real estate out. So basically it's not a, a passive type of investment. Basically, you're going to keep making money on that real estate 
Oh, year after year after year because you can either let's say it's even farmland you can re, you can farm that land let's say it's, again it's real estate like an apartment you get rent from somebody um, with gold you basically can look at it you can feel it but it's not going to do you any good so that's one of the reasons why it's more um, not really uh, producing it's not an investment that produces for you like some of the other investments would uh, for stock market for example if you buy you know a lot more risk but if you buy dividends you get uh, dividend stocks you get that dividend every year plus you possibly can go up in value with gold you're not getting dividends you're not getting rent from somebody you're not getting any of that stuff so it is basically going to be usually to hedge that that fund uh, or hedge your money basically if, if everything hits the fan and you have a lot of gold it'll usually go up in value and it'll get you out of some tight spots so short term gold could go up a lot more so in the short term gold will usually go up slightly um, and let's say the market tanks uh, you could win in gold pretty easily in the short term but over many 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 years um, and this is what Warren Buffett said basically is that you know he really wants to put his money in real estate and stocks because you know of that producing factor um, you know gold you know usually those things will completely outproduce or outwork the gold in that time and you know, I'm sure he has gold in case again something happens and he needs it but he kind of hedges it that way and he doesn't have a big portion of his portfolio in gold all right I'm just gonna show you guys a couple little quick things here online I'm gonna go to a screen share so stick with me Alrighty, so I'm going to show you guys a couple things here. I want to kind of break this down to show you why gold could be a good investment or maybe it's a really bad investment depending on what you see here. So basically, here's one year in gold. If you can see it, it actually was um, over here. It was around, uh, let's say, 1320, 1340 over here. If you can see my mouse, it actually went way down. It was down around 1200 uh, somewhere in October of 2018. And then it came right back up to about 1300 Now it's down to about 1280 somewhere 1270 1280 right over here. So you can see over a year, obviously, it's been pretty stagnant. I mean, it went down and came back up. Um, again, it's a, it's a hedge on your money, so it, you, didn't, you know, don't expect to make a ton of money on this. But if you kind of go uh, two years um, here, it looks like about the same. But let's expand this about 30 years out. And if we extend it around 30 years out, you can see that way back in the 90s, um, way down here, gold was around, let's see this, um, it was $363 and even got lower than that, $352, even down here, $254 an ounce. So obviously at $254 an ounce, and now we're at $1,200, that's about five times. So that's about 500%. So in those 30 years, you could have potentially made 500% on your money. And you would have had that hedge if the stock market collapses, then gold will actually go you know, up and even further than this. So you have that safety net. Now, that seems great, obviously. Um, obviously, in more modern times, it's been more fluctuating. So you could have had an investment since 2010 and made no money. In fact, you could have lost money. So that's something to consider as well. Um, it hasn't had the same kind of exponential growth as it has way back in the day. Um, but still, you know, it's still good to own some gold. But let's take a look at that. And, you know, this is basically what you have to look at right here, this chart over the history. And you can see that lately it's been pretty stagnant. Um, but it is a hedge. So go, let's go to Amazon now. This is the example I like to use. So if you go down to Amazon, and this is why, uh, of course, stocks are way more risky. They're going to have tons more risk, and, and you're going to have to be very, very careful when you invest in stocks. Um, stocks have sometimes a lot of dividends and things like that, but I just like to use this as an example. If you can get lucky, you can find that unicorn of a stock, you can get rich, but it's almost impossible. A lot of people can't do it for some reason. Um, but look at this stock, for example. Way back here in 1997, this was at one dollar and seventy three cents one dollar and seventy three cents and now it's it got up to around two thousand dollars right over here and that was in 2018 so a dollar seventy three to two thousand so let's go ahead really quickly and we'll do the math on this so basically if we take let's say we invested ten thousand dollars in Amazon way back here in 1997 Let's divide that by 1.73. So we actually would have bought 5,080 shares. So we would have had 5,080 shares back in 1997. Now it's worth $2,000. So um, let's go ahead and punch in 2,000. And you can see here by these numbers, you might not be able to see that clearly, but it's basically going to be $11,560,963 that you would have made off of that stock. $11,500,000. Now granted, you would have had to pick the right stock at the exact right time and not, not freaked out when it went up and when it went down and not sold it and actually just held on to it. And it would have been, you know, what is that, 20 something years, 25 years of your life that you would have had to hold on to it. But as you can see, that that's nowhere close to gold. Now, granted, if this stock collapses, and a lot, let's say people here uh, had bought it way up here when it's really high, and a lot of people did, usually that's what happens, the stock just plummets, let's say, 
um, at that point, it'll be nice to have gold because gold will skyrocket in price and then this stock will be worth nothing. So you can see that's why it's a hedge. So anyways, I just wanted to show you these examples. I know it's just really quick, but it's important to see the examples and then we can kind of go from there and I'll, I'll continue with the video here in a second. Just one quick note too, in 1971, the U.S. government, uh, we used to be backed by gold, our entire like basically monetary unit. 1971, uh, they actually changed that and now it's not. So uh, the one good thing, you know, one thing that's positive about gold is the fact that right now gold's only like 12 or 1300 bucks and we got off the gold standard. So basically that was many, many years ago. But they were saying if we were to bring back that ever, ever again, uh, in order for the amount of gold that's out there to kind of meet our monetary, uh, an ounce of gold would be probably be worth ten to $12,000 an ounce instead of 1200 <clears throat> Will that ever happen? No, probably not. Um, but it's just something to think about that gold's probably worth actually more than it's actually selling for. But again, it, it, you know, it, you're hoping at that point and you're not really making money while you're waiting. So it's, um, I usually, if I buy any gold, I'll buy it just to have something. Um, when the bad times come in, gold goes up, you can sell that and then you can actually use that money um, a different way if you need to. And one thing is, too, is when you're buying gold, just be a little bit careful. I mean, you can buy it from eBay and things like that. Um, check online. There's really a one way to only one way because people can shave off things. They can do anything that, you know, they, they can put lead in the middle of a gold coin. There's things like that you have to be very, very careful about. There's a company called APMEX. I'm not affiliated with them. APMEX, that's one company. There's some other companies. There's hundreds of companies you can buy legitimate gold from, um, have it shipped to you if you want to do that. Then go ahead and put them in safety deposit box, things like that, or, or keep them, you know, dug, dig a hole in your backyard. Um, but realistically, you know look up this it's called specific gravity you can actually do a test on gold it's basically you get a test tube and you drop the gold whatever it is inside of it and you see how much water it displaces and then based on the mass and things like that it'll tell you if it's 100 percent gold that's really the only way to know i mean if you're someone's hiding something in there lead and those other type of metals will have a different specific gravity so you don't really want to deal with any of that stuff you really just want to buy it from a really reputable place um you know and then you actually don't have to worry about it Alrighty, thanks again for watching. So I hope that teaches everyone a little bit about gold. I know it's not, it's just a beginner's guide. Um, there's a lot of things you know you have to know about it, do some research on it and things like that. Look at the history of it. It's obviously fun to own some gold or it's fun, you know, it's got that kind of intrinsic value where you actually like looking at it and things like that. But realistically, I mean, if you, you should use it maybe as a hedge against some other things that you invest in. Um, I'd rather put my money in other areas, you know, that can make me a little bit more money while I'm a little bit younger. Although I'm not, I'm not too much, I'm not that young anymore, but as I get a little bit, you know, as I grow older, I might, I might you know, obviously go a little bit more towards gold. Um, but right now I'm trying to take a little bit more risk and things like that in my investments. So when you had high up gold, it can be there sitting there for many, many years. So it's, you know, according to Warren Buffett, he doesn't really like it either. So, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of people that invest. He's not the only one. He may have gotten a little luck in his life, but he's got to be pretty good to be worth what he's worth. Alrighty. So if you guys can actually subscribe to my channel really quickly, it's going to help me out, help me make a lot more of these. I'm trying to build my subscriber list up. So please go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button.